So it's a fairly common uh, aspect of, of selling anything these days that what we're selling, what we're advertising, is, is comfortable, right? You know, we all want comfortable cars. We want convenience foods. Everything should be kind of as quick and as convenient as possible. Um, some of us might remember the days when, when life was tough and you used to have to actually uh, buy a loaf of bread and physically, with a bread knife, cut off your slices. It was hard. It was hard. These days, bread comes pre-sliced. It's great. There were days when you had to get up off your couch and walk the whole way across the room to the television to change the channels. You know, and you'd, you'd normally elect the little brother or sister. Oh, it's, come on, you do it. Come on, come on. No, I'm not going to do it. And they have to actually walk across the room and change the channel. No, 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 not that channel. Whereas these days, from the comfort of your couch with the remote, you don't even have to move. Okay, so selling everything, uh, advertising things, uh, comfort is often very, very important. And it's understandable. Like, I mean, there's no point mounting misery on us for, for, kind of for, for no reason. Also, even with, uh, with doctors, with health in general, uh, if you go to a doctor and he doesn't give you tablets, like say, for example, you go to the doctor and you have a, a headache, uh, and it's, it, there's, no, like, there's no serious cause, it's just it's one of those things that'll pass. All it requires is time and rest. If you don't get any medicine going home, useless doctor. Oh, didn't give me an antibiotic or nothing. You don't need an antibiotic. You have an ingrown toenail. You know what I mean? Like it's, you know. So we, kind of, we want something immediately to, 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 to relieve the pain, make us feel comfortable again. You know? There's even a doctor friend of mine from, from Germany, and uh, he has a lot of uh, kind of alternative cures, if you will, to, musc to muscular pain or to um, osteo. Um, uh, pain with, 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 your, with your bones. His technique is to strengthen the muscle around the joint, say for example hips or, or knees, strengthen the muscle around the joint so that the muscle is carrying more of the weight and the, muscle isn't, the bone isn't on top of the bone. But in order, to in order to build muscle, you have to lift w particular weights and he'll show you how, how to do it, but it requires consistent effort for weeks. And so those who do it see great benefits, but most people fall off the train at some point, fall off the wagon because they prefer a tablet. Just give me a tablet. Or even, I'll just, okay, I'll do the surgery and just wait for it to heal itself. So basically, the point, point being is that um, we have this desire in us to, to avoid suffering and to avoid pain and to, 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 for everything to be comfortable, which again, isn't necessarily bad, but there is something greater. There is something greater. We'll see in a sec. I remember back in the 90s, uh, that's about as far back as I can remember, uh, it's about 25 years ago, <clears throat> healing ministry in Ireland was huge. There were healing masses all over the place, there were healers, lay and uh, religious and priests, and there were all sorts of cures and all sorts of things going on, all sorts of wacky things as well. I remember there was this one, <laughs> this one lady who used to pray with people by kind of swinging her rosary beads around them. All right, she's swinging, and then depending on how it swung, Oh, you need magnesium. I'll get you magnesium tablets, and then that this was your cure, you know. So there's, there's wacky stuff going on. But there, there, was some, there were some very, very good uh, healers and priests and everything out, out there as well. Absolutely not taken from the legitimacy of, of the ministry at all. It was very, very good and very important. If I may add a but. But. There is something deeper than physical healing. We want to be comfortable. We do want to avoid pain. We want our lives to be, to be safe, to be secure, but uh, we also say well, we want to avoid those, those kind of difficulties. Again, that's not necessarily wrong. But the issue then, there's a couple of issues arise from, from, from this thought. One, if God is good, why does he allow it in the first place? And good, and secondly, if God is good, why does he only cure some? All right, so why does he allow it in the first place? And secondly, uh, at these healing masses, like uh, some people were healed, thank God. But in the grand scheme of things, r relatively few are healed. So again, we are also trying to understand see, and always protect the image of God as a loving fault. So God is good, but why then isn't everyone getting healed? Now, the kind of somewhat dangerous answer is to quote scripture in this way and understand it in this way, that if you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to this mountain, move, and it would move. So if you're not healed, it's because you've, 
You've not got enough faith. You lack faith. So if you're not healed, it's your fault. Okay, that's a very, very, very dangerous understanding of things because you're blaming the sick person for their own illness. You're blaming, the, you're, you're effectively accusing them of not having enough faith when very often like people with, with these illnesses or difficulties <clears throat> have great faith, profound faith. But they like to be healed if you've got, you know, if, you've got if you're a grandparent or a parent diagnosed with cancer. You know, understandably, you want to be healed. So to say, well, you're not healed because you lack faith, that's, that's it's a dangerous, I think it's, uh, it's, 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 an, it's an understanding that lacks something because there's something more. There's something more. <clears throat> In today's gospel, uh, Jesus heals Simon's mother-in-law. And some say that's actually why he became a saint because he, Simon asked that his mother-in-law mother -in be cured. Most sons-in-law wouldn't ask for that. Uh, so, um, but as when she's healed, she immediately gets up and serves them. She, immediately, she, be, she got up and began to wait on them. She served them. <coughs> so she receives this healing, and then immediately starts to give back. She does something, right? She doesn't just kind of she's healed and now everyone come to me and congratulate me and so on and so forth. But she's healed and she gives back. Okay, now very often in scripture, I, I don't, I'm not sure if it's all the time, but it's very, very often. Uh, when these kind of healings occur, the Gospels don't call them healings per se, but they call them signs, especially in John's Gospel, signs. Okay, so in the wedding feast of Cana, for example, right, after he works a miracle, if you read John's Gospel there, <clears throat> it says, this was the first of the signs that Jesus worked. He manifested his glory and the disciples believed in him. So he works a miracle, but it's called a sign. Manifests his glory, and the disciples believed in him. So a sign is what? Well, it, it points to something else. Nobody will stand at a crossroad looking at the signpost going, that, that sign says Dublin, wow, Dublin. Must be amazing. Look, it says Dublin. Now, maybe, maybe, maybe if you come home from six years abroad and you see you know, your own your own uh, place, uh, your own country, or your own, what, whatever you call it, town, uh, on a signpost, you might say, wow, ballin' a slow boy. <laughs> Look at that. But, but you're not going to stay there very long because you know that the actual town of ballin' a slow is much better than the sign saying ballin' a slow. It's quite obvious in real life that signs are only signs. They point to something else. So, in fact, if anything, getting stuck on the sign, you've missed the point. Get to the destination. Get to what it's pointing to. That's, that's what's important. <coughs> so healings. <coughs> healings are signs. Healings are signs. They're not the destination. They're not the destination. So if the Lord entrusts us with the cross, <coughs> it's not a punishment. It's not because we lack faith. Right? Some people, some will be healed, thank God, some will be healed. And those that are healed, that's a sign that God is alive and active, that God, that God cares, that God is there, that he's Father, that he's powerful, absolutely. But the, the goal isn't just to have a healthy body and then that's it. Like the mother-in-law who's healed, once we have received that, that healing, then we have to go and do something. Because now that you've received the grace of healing, now you have to be a witness. Now you have to be a witness to God's power in you. The goal of a healing, the goal of healing ministry isn't just to give you a, a healthy body and then let you on your merry way <clears throat> to commit all sorts of sin and then risk your soul. This is the big picture. The big picture is eternal salvation. That is always the big picture. That is always the ultimate goal of everything. You can call it heaven. You can call it God. You can turn it, call it eternal bliss. You can call it all of creation returning back to its creator. It's, it's the same idea. Everything must return, everything should return to God. So if we're healed, this should cause us to, to, to love God even more and return with our body and soul intact, you know, to God. If I witness a healing, then this should increase my faith and increase my trust in God that, I might, that my soul might return to him. And if I'm not healed, then I, with God's grace, I, I should carry my cross with, with, with humility, with love, with, with acceptance for as long as, as the good Lord allows. And that that 
cross, that difficulty, uh, that that will open my heart to counting on God even more, to praying even more deeply, and to an ever greater love for him, even though I don't fully understand or comprehend why I still have this cross. But Lord, not my will, but yours be done. And so you see, th- th- there's, there's a bigger picture in, in, in healing ministry. And that's the, the eternal salvation of the soul. That's what's important. Now, because I'm, uh, I don't want to sound dualist here where the soul is important and the body isn't. Of course not. But uh, the healing of, of, of the body on its own is kind of useless unless it positively affects the soul. In fact, if anything, the healing of the body, which allows me to sin even more, you're better off not having a healing. We shouldn't have... It, 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 God it would be better off not to heal us if our physical healing could actually cause us to sin more. So the, the bigger picture here is always the soul. And I feel that's where <coughs> we are today, in, in, in today's world. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, there doesn't seem to be as much healing ministry now as before. I think that might be because the, our, our need in today's world <clears throat> isn't so much the healing of the body. There's still plenty of illness and sickness out there, yes. But the much more profound need are the, the hurts and the wounds of the soul, the heart. The heart. Look at rates of depression, rates of suicide, yeah, addiction. That they, these are issues of the heart, not, not of the body. But you get the heart right, you get the, the, the soul right. Everything else falls into place. And the crosses that we carry, that difficult time of carrying a cross, it is limited. Difficult as the cross may be, I don't want to, to diminish anybody's suffering at all, but that will end. <clears throat> but if it helps me get to heaven for all eternity, then it serves a purpose. So the Lord can heal <clears throat> and does heal and will heal. <clears throat> but in the, in the Lord's, from the Lord's perspective, Healing will always take place, or will always be, will be granted, in a view to the eternal salvation of the soul. And so, sometimes, yes, we, we do have to carry crosses. They, they might be physical, they might be uh, emotional, spiritual. But if the Lord allows it, he asks us to walk by faith. He asks us to trust him. And if you look at the lives of the saints... I mean, what, what saint didn't have a cross? I'm very often a physical crossing of St. Faustina who was, had TB. She was rotting alive. She, she said like she was so embarrassed by the smell of her own decaying body when sisters would come to, to, to visit her to bring her food. And she, she knew that she, she, her wounds they just smelled really bad. you know. But she's a saint. Did she lack faith? Did she lack love of God? Did God abandon her? None of the above. She was so loved, <laughs> infinitely loved, full of faith and trust. But the Lord has a bigger picture. Think of the saints who died young, your St. Teresa of Lisieux, your Domenico Savios. You think, you know, the, the, the difficulties that they carried. But all in that, in that bigger perspective or horizon, that of eternal life. And so, Lord, as we hear today's gospel of, of your various healings <clears throat> healings of the body healings of uh, those who are possessed we hear the great acclamation that the people had for you they didn't want you to leave but Lord let, let us never forget that these healings are signs that they point to you they point to you our Lord our God and our Saviour who love us so much that you want us to be with you in heaven for all eternity Amen.